I'm gonna teach you how to properly hold the discus and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, I'm Dane Miller from throwsuniversity.com and if this is your first time to the channel, make sure you comment down below with whatever you are struggling with. This is a channel completely dedicated to developing discus technique, to developing a shot put understanding of the glide, a shot put understanding of the rotational technique and anything else related to throws based training. Make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So over the last decade, we've had tons and tons of beginner throwers come through our doors here at Garage Strength. We've had thousands of athletes working with us on throwsuniversity.com and a lot of them will bring up the question, how do we properly hold the discus for an effective release? And I think that a lot of times that throwers get confused because it's made to be so complicated and it does feel a little awkward when you're holding the discus. It tends to feel like it might fall out, but we need to establish that grip and establish some confidence. So we're gonna go over some very simple aspects behind how you hold the discus and how you can apply it to your training. Every single 60 meter discus thrower that I coach currently tends to throw one of two ways. They're either going to hold the discus where their fingers are just over the edge. And we can almost see that, that backwards L here in that right hand. So if we can think about having the discus with our fingers just over the edge, our discus throwers are either gonna hold it this way or they're gonna put their fingers together, their first two, their index finger and their middle finger together. I believe that is 100% based around choice, based around comfort. The big key is that we don't want to be holding the discus here. We don't want to be grabbing here. We don't want to be fearing that it's going to drop out. We've got to trust ourselves. And we've got to understand that we want to hold the, the fingers just over the edge of the rim. And if we want to be more comfortable with two fingers together here, that's perfectly fine. Some guys might like to move that pinky out if they like that better. I tend to think, you know, again, it's up to personal preference. The big key, don't grab it. The second big key, understand that momentum is what's going to get us to have a nice release. Okay. If I'm not moving the discus, if I don't move my body, my, my, my torso here or my hand here, the discus is going to fall out. But if I'm moving my arm, the discus will not fall out. It should not fall out. And it's going to take hundreds and hundreds of reps for throwers to get confident. And we like doing simple drills just like this right now. We're going to throw that discus up catch it and, and repeat. And we wanna think coming off of the index finger and the middle finger or just the ring finger if we like the traditional spread apart grip right here. So when we're gonna start with doing our standing throws, our beginner throwers will always take anywhere from five to seven simple stands. We've gotta watch and make sure that that discus is spinning away from the body, okay? So it should be released and it'll come off of that index finger and spin away from the body. It should not spin towards the body. The easiest thing to do, a lot of athletes, a lot of coaches love to use bowling games. I think they're okay to a point where they'll they'll roll out in the sector and they'll watch, you know, they'll play games and see who can roll the longest. Those are okay, but it doesn't mimic the way the hand is and it doesn't mimic the tension in the shoulder. I think the easiest thing to do, and my high school coach did this and I thought it was fantastic, was to go out in the sector and you would take 15 to 20 foot standing throws. Just nice and easy flick and you'd flick for to find that comfort, to find it rolling off of your hand. And it might take some throwers 50 throws. It might take some throwers five throws, but play around, get out in the sector. You have nice, easy flicks coming off of that index finger. Some people, if they hold together here, they might come off the middle finger as well. But we've got to recognize that it's all about comfort. It's also all about momentum. When we get to that full throw, Beginners tend to have a little bit of a hesitant position. They might bring that right hand forward. We've got to establish the movement early on. We have to let the athlete, let the thrower feel confident in what we want them to do in the circle. We have to have them feel confident on how it's coming out of their hand when they're doing those standing flicks. And I recommend you take five to 10 standing flicks with beginner throwers early on 
And then right after that, we start to establish that movement in the circle because the sooner they get comfortable in the circle, the sooner they're gonna get comfortable releasing that discus and the less wobble they're gonna have and it, the less likely it'll be to come off their pinky when they're starting to release. So just be aware of watching how the discus spins. It should come off and rotate away here instead of rotate towards. And we've got to make sure that we're holding our hands just slightly with our fingers over that rim weight, okay? Don't harp one technique over the other. Harp comfort. Harp feeling tension and momentum. And that is what's going to lead to a growth in that discus thrower. It's all about comfort. We want to constantly, you know, tell them to hold it here or tell them to take a sit, stand a specific way, but we've got to coach up comfort with our key principles. So if you want more information on how to train beginner throwers, you can click on this card right here. You can head over to throwsuniversity.com and pick up any of our books that's gonna help you develop world-class throwers from day one. Till next time, guys, peace.